How y'all doing, good people? It's Saturday morning, and um, looks like it's a beautiful day outside. I decided to go ahead and do this video inside today. Um, I wanted to make sure I got this information to you guys because uh, it's very important information. And it's gonna continue to build on this conversation we've been having over the last week about what's happening here in this country when it comes to the haves and the have nots. We, don't, we wanna continue building on that conversation because I want you guys to know as fellow 99 percenters, we have to pay attention. We have to understand what's going on with our assets and who is trying to control those assets. Their main goal, they want us to own nothing. They want us to own nothing. They want us to become a renter nation. They want us to become a buy now, pay later nation. That way they can control us and manipulate us. So we want to talk about that today. But before I do that, I want you guys to consider hitting that thumbs up button for me. Lock it in with a thumbs up. If you appreciate the content, go ahead right off the bat. Before we even dive into this important subject, lock it in with a thumbs up if you don't mind. Also, if you want up to 15 free stocks, Moomoo is going to give you up to 15 free stocks when you open a new Moomoo brokerage account. You put $100 in that brokerage account, they're going to give you five free stocks. You put $1,000 in that brokerage account, they're going to give you 15 free stocks. There's a link down in the description box of this video. Go click on that Moomoo link. Open up that new Moomoo account today. Go get your free stock. Go get your free money. Now let's get started on this notion of they want us to own nothing, right? Let me read you something just real quickly to set the stage because I think it's important. And here's the title of this article that I read. Uh, it says how the American middle class has changed in the past five decades. This is important, guys, because it sets the stage and it, it, it makes you aware of what's happening. What is happening with the middle class, which the majority of us are in. Right. We got lower income uh, income folks. But the majority of Americans sit right in that middle class income category. But this is what's been happening over the last five decades. Let me read a little bit of this for you to set the stage and then we're going to dive into it. The middle class wants the economic stratum of a clear majority of American adults has steadily contracted in the past five decades. The share of adults who live in middle class households fell from 61% in 1971 to 50% in 2021. The shrinking of the middle class has been accompanied by an increase in the share of adults in the upper income tier. That's the 1%. You see where I'm going with this? The middle class, which is predominantly the 99%, has been shrinking, right? It's been shrinking. That wealth from the middle class has been transferred to the upper class. And in this case, upper class, in my opinion, means the 1%. Let me read a little bit more. from. From, it says, the shrinking of the middle class has been accompanied by an increase in the share of adults in the upper income tier. From 14% in 1971 to 21% in 2021. 
as well as increasing the share who are in lower income tier from 25% to 29%. These changes have occurred gradually as the share of adults in the middle class decreased in each decade from 1971 to 2011. So what I'm telling you here is, guys, the, the middle class back in the day, in the 70s, was strong and vibrant and, and, and held the majority of the wealth. That's been transferred. The majority of the wealth now is controlled by, quote unquote, the upper class, which is considered the 1%. We talked last night in, in the live stream last night. We talked about this $18 trillion in liquid assets that are being controlled by the 1%. We also talked about $7 trillion of that 18 trillion was transferred from the middle class folks like you and I, the 99%, 7 trillion was transferred in the last three years. And we also talked about how they transferred it. They transferred it through real estate and they transferred it through the stock market. Those are the two ways they have been transferring assets for five decades from the middle class the lower middle class to the upper class, a.k.a. the 1%. And that's what they're going to continue to try and do unless we stop them. But the only way we can stop them is by changing the way we think, reprogramming our filter system, and stop allowing them to manipulate us because that's what's happening. We also talked a little bit last night about these, these big gigantic companies who are really controlled by the 1% building all of these renter communities. See, they want us to become a nation of renters. They don't want us to own real estate because if we own real estate, that gives us, that takes back some of our net worth, Right. Even though real estate, if you're not deriving any income from it, is considered a dead asset, in my opinion, it's still an asset where most Americans, most middle class Americans hold the majority of their wealth in their real estate. So how do you take the middle class wealth away from them? You take the real estate away from them. You take the real estate away from them. If you can take their real estate. They don't have any wealth because the 1% know the majority of us keep our wealth in our real estate. We do not keep our wealth in the stock market. The majority of us do not keep our wealth in businesses. We keep our wealth in our real estate. So over this last five decades, that's what they've been taking from us. They've been taking our real estate from us. They've been manipulating us to thinking the stock market is a, is a trick. It's not real. Don't trust it. So a lot of us don't. A lot of us do not trust the stock market because we believe the stock market is a mirage. It's a sham. But guys, in actuality, it's not. In actuality, that's where a lot of the 1% keep the majority of their wealth. So we have to be pay careful attention to what's going on. Let's think about what's been happening over these last three years with assets. Assets have been going up. Real estate's been going up in value. Stock market's been going up in value, right? But also inflation has been going up, right? Prices have been going up. Our wages have went up but they haven't went up as fast as prices of our goods and services. And see, the 1% know that. So now what are they doing? They're introducing all of these ways for us to, to have things without having to actually pay for them up front. The resurgence of buy now, pay later. You got apps out there right now, guys, that you can buy stuff with no money up front, Get it home and then pay for it over time. Why are they doing that? Because they don't want you to own anything. They don't want you to own anything. 
They're going to artificially keep rents low, right? They're not going to increase rents rapidly. They're going to try to keep rents low because they want you to know and believe rents are lower than owning a property, which in this case it is right now. It's cheaper to rent than it is to own. But that's by design. The 1% has made that attractive to us. Part of the American dream has always been home ownership. That's been part of the American dream for since the founding fathers, right? That's been a part of the American dream. That's why people come here from every part of the world, seeking asylum here, trying to start a new life here because they want a piece of that American dream. But now that American dream is starting to turn into uh, a renter state. It's starting to turn into a population of people that don't own anything. They rent everything. And that's not the, where we want to be, guys. That's the trap. They want us to think like that. They don't want us to think about ownership of nothing. They want us to only rent, only, you know, just live for now. Don't worry about tomorrow. But that's a mistake. That's why assets, I keep telling y'all, assets are so important. The 1% don't want you to own assets, guys. And everything they do is to convince you you don't need assets. We got you back, guys. You don't need that. We got your Social Security. That's your retirement. What are you worried about retirement for? Live your life. Enjoy life for, for today. Don't worry about tomorrow. We got you back. We got Social Security here for you. Right? Don't worry about it. We'll take care of you in your old age. What they don't tell you guys is the type of taking care of you they're going to do is not going to be sufficient enough. Social Security is not going to be sufficient enough to take care of you when you get to the golden years. It's just not. A couple thousand dollars a month, guys, is not going to do it. So don't let the 1% continue to manipulate you because that's what they're trying to do. I mean, this whole buy now, pay later, guys, come on. Let's, let's, but you know what that is, though? That's in an effort to make it easy for you. See, they want to make it easy for you to spend, 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 spend because it benefits them, Right? They want you to be able to spend. They want to make it really, really easy for you to just get in debt. Own no assets, but have a bunch of debt. That's where they want you because they got you when they get you like that. You got a bunch of debt, but you own no assets. You have no emergency fund. You have no retirement savings. If you do own a home, you got no equity in it. Why? Because they're going to allow you and encourage you to do an equity line on it and then take that equity line, which eats up all of your equity, and do what with it? Spend it to make them wealthy. Oh, take yourself on a, on a, on a trip. You know, go to Europe. You deserve it. You worked hard this year. No, you ain't got to invest that money in the stock market. You ain't got to invest that money in a business. Go ahead and spend it and enjoy your life. We got you covered. We got you with Social Security. We got you covered. But it's all a lie because they really don't have you covered because you do know Social Security won't be able to take care of you. Guys, they want you to own nothing. The writing's on the wall. They took $7 trillion from you over the last three years through manipulation, through real estate, and through the stock market. They just manipulated you into giving them $7 trillion. Now, they're trying to manipulate even further. Now, how in the world can these insurance companies just have carte blanche? They can increase premiums to whatever they want to increase them to. There's nobody to stop them. How in the world can car insurance go from, go up by 40% in one year? How in the world is that having our back? These people who we elect in these political seats, how in the world can they allow the insurance industry just to increase automobile insurance by 40%? How can they let that happen? When they know, 
we're already struggling when they know our wages are not keeping up with the cost of living. But yet and still, they allow the insurance industry to increase car insurance on average across America by 40 percent. They allow homeowner insurance companies that insure homes. They allow them in the state of Florida to increase homeowner premiums through the roof. They allow them to not pay victims of these last couple of hurricanes we've had here in the state of Florida that has hit the state of Florida. You got these, these insurance companies that won't even pay the claims, guys. People have been paying into these policies for years and years and years and years, and they won't even honor these people's claims. People have been out of their homes for two, almost a year and a half after these two great hurricanes we've had. But yet and still, they got our back. They don't have our back, guys. I'm telling you, none of these politicians, none of these one percenters have your back. Because if they had your back, they wouldn't allow these insurance companies to do what they do. But I mean, you know why they allow them to do it? Because the insurance companies are the one percent, too. They work all in connection, guys, to m manipulate us. Right. See, we're the gasoline for the engine. We're the gasoline. We make all of this stuff in this country work us the 99 percenters, but we're abused financially. Think about it. Think about it. Everything that you spend your money on, think about it, has increased in price. Everything, everything has increased in price. Tell me one thing that has come down in price. Okay, 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 over the last couple of weeks, gasoline. Gasoline has came down a little bit. Okay, that, okay, that, that's one thing. Shelter costs hadn't come down. Food costs hadn't come down. Insurance costs ain't come down. I just told you what they're doing with the insurance. Car insurance, homeowner's insurance, medical insurance. My medical insurance, <laughs> my medical insurance went up by like $120. And I know some of you's medical insurances went up higher than that. I'm talking about on a monthly basis. So I pay medical, just like hopefully most of us do, right? It went up by like 120 bucks. No reason, no rhyme or reason, just went up. Everything's going up, guys. Problem is your salary ain't going up fast enough to keep up with it. So what are you going to do? I'm just telling you the black and white, guys. You better pay attention here. Your salary is not going to keep up with these escalating prices. A lot of y'all say, well, golly, inflation's coming down. Well, prices should come down. Prices ain't coming down, guys. That's the new normal. Just because inflation is coming down, all that's telling you is when you see inflation coming down, that don't mean prices coming down. What it's telling you is prices are just not increasing as fast as they were a year ago. See, in, in, in June of 2022, prices were increasing at 9% a clip. Now they're only increasing at 3%. <laughs> they're not coming down, though. Oh, golly, my insurance costs should come down next year. They're not coming down. They're going to still increase. They're just going to increase at a, at, a, at a smaller increment since inflation is starting to come down. But that don't mean price is coming down. I tell people that same thing for, for homes. Home prices are not going to come down, guys. This is the new normal. They just won't increase in price as fast. But they're not coming down. They're not coming down. We've been hearing all this talk about the, the, the car market. Oh, golly, uh, used cars are coming down rapidly. New car, no, they ain't. They're just not increasing as fast in price. I, ain't, I don't see anything coming down. I was at the Range Rover dealership the other day. Them, them prices ain't coming down. Now, they may not have as, as many new cars on, on the showroom floor because that's just by design. That's coming from the manufacturer, though. See, the manufacturer got smart. Doing, doing COVID, doing, doing, doing the pandemic. Car manufacturers got smart and said, you know something, why in, the world are we, why in the world are we producing all this excess inventory that just sits on the dealer lots and, 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 and don't move? 
No, we don't need to create all this, 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 this excess inventory. Let's, let's, make, let's just make enough. That way we can keep prices high, keep demand somewhat decent, and not just have inventory sitting on showroom floors not doing anything. See, these manufacturers got smart. They're not really reducing the price, though. Prices are basically the same, pretty much, right? What's happening is they're just not increasing them as fast, right? But, but, but again, our incomes ain't even close. Our incomes are not even close to keeping up with what's happening, guys. I'm telling you, insurance costs are going through the roof. My automobile insurance policies, guys, has almost doubled, almost doubled since 2022. And I know a lot of you guys feel that too. See, thank goodness I've been buying assets for 25 years. I've been building my wealth for 25 years. And I'm able to absorb it. But for your folks out there that are brand new at this asset thing, brand new at this investment thing, it got to be pretty tough for you out there when you're looking at these insurance costs, you're looking at these food costs, you're looking at the cost of shelter, you're looking at mortgage cost. And like we talked about last night, these, these mortgage delinquencies, guys, are going to get worse. Car delinquencies, car payment delinquencies, car loan delinquencies is getting worse. Why? Because over the last three years, they've tricked us into buying these these, these things at inflated prices, and now all of a sudden, our, our, our variable costs are starting to go up. We can't keep up with the car payment. We can't keep up with the mortgage payment and keep up with the increased insurance, the increase in food, the increase in utilities, the increase in everything we use to live. We can't keep up with all of it. Our incomes are not sufficient enough to keep up with all of it. So something got to go. So that's why you're starting to see mortgage payment delinquencies, car loan payment delinquencies, credit card delinquencies. All of that stuff is starting to tick up because of our incomes are not keeping up with the cost of these things. Plus, we don't have no assets, but that's where they want us. They want us to own nothing and rent everything. Ultimately, that's the plan, guys, in America. The haves, the 1%, want to control all the real estate. They want to control all of the assets, the paper assets, the businesses. They want to control them all. Look at what's happening. I told you about these renter communities that they're building around the country they look and feel like single family homes. That's the American dream. Now, you don't have to own it anymore, guys. It's cheaper to rent it. Why own it? You still get all the benefits. They don't want to own it. They don't want you to own it because they don't want you to have no equity. They don't want you to have no net worth so they can control you. That's why they're, they're building all these renter communities. Why do you think they build all these apartment complexes over the last three years? I'm thinking to myself, everywhere you turn, you got these giant apartment complexes coming up, at least down here where I live in Florida. And I'm thinking to myself, golly, man, inflation is going through the roof, but these people still building all these apartment complexes. That's why. <laughs> There's a method to their madness. They know what they're doing. They're building it because they know a lot of Americans are not going to be able to afford to buy a house. So guess what they've been doing? Building these apartments building these renter communities, single family home renter communities, because they know the majority of Americans won't be able to buy a home. They're going to be priced out. I don't care if they do reduce interest rates. They're going to be priced out because the prices are going to be high. They're going to artificially keep inventory low, guys. And they're going to stick all of us, or, or, or a lot of us, they're going to stick in these apartment complexes. They're going to stick us in these renter communities of these single-family homes and tell us it's just it's the same thing. You just don't own it. You get all the benefits. You still got your own home. You got your white picket fence. You just don't own it. It's cheaper for you to just rent it. And then you can take the rest of your money and just enjoy your life. 
Because remember, you don't have to save for retirement because we're going to give you Social Security. So just enjoy your life. Live for the short term. Don't worry about the long term. We got you covered. That's the trap. That's the financial trap that you're faced with. The question is, are you going to allow that to happen? Are you going to exercise your right as an American and go get your wealth? Are you going to exercise your right as American in the greatest country in the world? Or are you just going to sit back and let them control you financially? I'm not going to let them control me financially. I'm going to buy assets. I'm going to buy assets every single month, every single year, because I'm not going to be controlled by the 1%. I'm going to be controlled by me. But see, I can't be controlled by me if I own nothing, if I have no assets, if I have no emergency fund, if I have no retirement savings, if I'm not living below my means. I can't control myself if I don't have multiple streams of income coming in. Most of Americans work for somebody, guys. Most of Americans do not own their own business. Most of Americans work for somebody. The last time I checked, I believe it was around 80 to 85% of Americans work for somebody. That's the trap. That's how they're going to control you. He who pays you controls you. That's the way it works in this country. He or she who pays you controls your financial destiny, guys. That's right. So if you want to control your own financial destiny, you better figure out a way to pay yourself. Ain't nothing wrong with having a job. I had one for 25 years, but it was never my only stream of income. It was my primary stream of income. Don't get me twisted. It was my primary stream of income, but I always had secondary sources of income where I was making money that I controlled because I knew those folks I worked for controlled my financial destiny on the primary income side. Why? Because that's, where who, that's who provided my health insurance. Right? They paid me a wage. They provided my health insurance. That was my primary income to pay my bills. But I always knew I didn't want to be subject to that because I always knew they could walk in any day and say, Richard, you know something? Thank you. Uh, but we're cutting back. We're going a different direction. You're great. It's not you, it's just the new direction we're going in the company and we don't need as many employees. So we're gonna give you a two week severance and wish you the best. What are you gonna do guys? Most states allow companies to do that here in the United States. I keep telling y'all businesses uh, and these one percenters, all the laws are skewed towards them when it comes to financial stuff. It's all skewed towards the 1%. Companies can do that. They can give you, fire you, right? All I'm telling you is that you better have multiple streams of income coming in to, 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 to be able to save yourself. See, because I had multiple streams of income, I didn't really worry about it. I said, you know something, if these folks do fire me, yeah, it'll, it'll, it'll hurt me for a few months, but I got assets, I got other skill sets, I'll get back on my feet. But see, now, if I don't have other skill sets, I don't have any assets, I'm going to be in a world of trouble if my employer decided to terminate me. What would you do if you went to work on Monday and they told you, you got no more job? What would you do? How would you survive? Could you survive financially? That's the question you got to start asking yourself, guys. Not, oh, uh, what am I be doing? You know, what vacation am I going on this year? I wouldn't be worried about that. What you should be worried about is, is why they want you to own nothing. Why everything is geared for you to own nothing. No assets, no real property. Only thing they want you to have is debt. That's it. They want you to have debt. They don't want you to have real property. And they do not want you to have other assets like stock market assets, 
a business. Mm -mm. They don't want you to have any of that. See, the American dream used to be work hard, build, you, build, build up your, 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 your assets through real estate, right? Through savings, right? That, that used to be the American dream. That's, that's what we all strive for, at least my parents strive for, and that's what they taught me. But this new America is, is different. It's different. This new America is the haves and the have-nots, and the haves don't want to share. Whether you believe it or not, they don't want to share with you guys. They want you just to be the gasoline for the engine. See, they're the engine, they're, but you're just the gasoline. They don't want you to, to own nothing. And the, and the problem is most of us fall, are falling into this trap. 100 million Americans, no retirement savings. We're falling into the trap. $1.3 trillion in credit card debt. We're falling into the trap. 62% of Americans live in paycheck to paycheck. We're falling into the trap. 1.1 million mortgages 60 days past due. We're falling into the trap. The writing is on the wall, guys. The question is, will you change it for you and your family? That's the whole point of me doing these videos. The whole point of me having this YouTube channel is to help you empower yourself to take back what's rightfully yours. Take it back. But you gotta be smart and you gotta be willing to change some things in your life. You gotta be willing to change some activities that you're doing. See, the activities you did in 2023, if they didn't get you the results you were looking for, you gotta change those activities in 2024. And I've been talking about this wealth transfer blueprint. That's, the, that's, that's what saves you guys, right? Whether you want to own real estate or not, you still need assets. You still need to be able to control your own financial destiny. You still need to be able to control your own financial power. If you don't, you will become someone that owns nothing. You will. You will be an American living in the greatest country in the world. And you will own nothing. I'm telling you guys, it's the writing is on the wall. These people are not fooling around. They took $7 trillion from us in three years. We didn't even know it. <laughs> right under our nose, we didn't even know it. $7 trillion, guys, that belongs to us, right? They took it through real estate. 1% own this real estate during the pandemic, the pandemic hits, right? Real estate pandemic boom. All these real estate prices go up because of the pandemic, shortage, short supply of real estate, people leaving the cities because you know, think the world coming to an end. A lot of these one percenters bought up that cheap real estate in 2020 when people panic sold. So you had, a, you, you, you had that first six months of 2020 where it was chaotic. People thought the world was ending. People are leaving and bunkering down and selling everything. Guess who stepped in and bought that real estate during that time? The 1%. Then this is what the 1% did. They held that real estate until 2021, 2022. Interest rates were still low, but what happened was real estate prices went to the moon. Real estate prices went to the moon. You had companies like Zello, uh, what's the other one? Um, but these real estate companies that have these online apps, Zello is one of them, but there are pen, plenty of other. Redfin, you know, all these companies started doing what? Buying up real estate, inflating the prices, running up prices of real estate. Y'all thought, oh, golly, what are these guys doing this? They're stupid. No, they weren't stupid. Yeah, somebody just chimed in, open door. That's another one. See, they weren't stupid, guys. They knew what they were doing. They were running up prices for the 1% because, see, the 1% had already acquired a bunch of real estate in the first six months of 2020 when people panic sold, right? The 1% were buying up these properties. And, I, and again, guys, I keep telling y'all, Redfin, Zillow, open door, 
All these companies, all these Wall Street companies are part of the 1% because the 1% own them. So they start using companies like Redfin, Open Door, Zello, and, and many others like that. They started using those companies making offers on real estate when people were panic selling. Oh yeah, we'll buy it from you. We'll give you this, we'll give you that. Got all this real estate. And then guess what? They said, okay, Fed, keep interest rates low. We'll let you know when it's time to start increasing. But for 2021, you keep interest rates as low as we can keep them because now we got to dump all this real estate on the 99%. And the way we're going to convince them to buy the real estate is we're going to keep interest rates low and tell them, look, you can get below a 3% interest rate. Yes, you can afford more house. I know it's expensive, but you can do it because you got a low interest rate. We fell into that trap, right? We fell into that trap. We buy all this real estate at inflated prices, 1% make out like a bandit. That's the first way we transfer part of that $7 trillion is through inflated real estate prices coupled with low interest rates. And then obviously the second way we did it was through the stock market in 2020. When, the, when we had the first real, the stock market crash in 2020 was around March and April of 2020. They manipulated us then. Stock market crashes, right? Because of the propaganda machine, the 1% owned the, the, the mainstream media. You had all this propaganda machine out here. The world's going to end. We don't know what's going to happen. Uh, get liquid, sell all your, your, your stuff, you know, all that stuff. So the market crashes. 1% step in from April through June, they start buying up everything. All of a sudden, 57 days later, the stock market goes back to all time highs. Now here it is now, the 99%, they've already manipulated us. We done sold our positions, sold at the wrong time, but that's how they do us though, they manipulated us. So we sold our positions, 1% swoop in, buy up all those cheap positions, and then guess what? Stock market goes back to all-time highs, boop, 1% dump. What do you think 2000, see, these people dumped it on us and that's, that's, the second, that's the second part of the seven trillion that they took from us. The third part of the seven trillion was in 2022. When the Fed, now, they had dumped all the real estate in 2021, first half of 2022, they dumped all the real estate on us at higher prices. Then they said to the Fed, okay, now it's time to start raising these interest rates because we're, we're good. We've dumped our real estate. Start raising these interest rates to fight inflation. So that's what the Fed start doing, right? All of 22, the Fed start increasing short-term interest rates. What happens to the stock market in 22 when the Fed does that though? It crashes. Why? Because when interest rates go up, stock market goes down. That's what happened in 22. Guess what the 1% did though? Went back to the propaganda machine, the mainstream media and did the same thing they did in 2020. They start telling everybody, get rid of everything, sell it all, sell it all. This, we're going into a recession. It's gonna be a major crash. Get liquid, sell it all, get out of it. You don't lose your whole, your savings. Don't lose your, get out of it. That's what they were preaching in 2020 through the propaganda machine, right? Here's the deal, though. <laughs> they were just setting us up, right? They set us up because that's what they do to us, guys. I keep telling y'all this. This is what they do to us. So they kept setting us up. Propaganda machine, propaganda machine. Oh, my God, the Fed is raising interest rates 75 basis points, 75 basis points, 75 basis points. Oh, we're going to go into the deepest recession and, and, and man has ever known. So we start selling everything. 1% scoop in, start buying them assets up cheap. Buying them up. Buying all these great companies, these great ETFs cheap in 2020. Stock market ends the year with a negative rate of return. 1%, I mean, two, uh, the 99% the of start saying, whoo, man, I'm glad I got out. I barely missed that. Not knowing that you were manipulated to do that. Because see, the 1% knew 2023 would roll around and the Fed at some point was going to take their foot off of the interest rate pedal, which they did. 
So when 23 rolls around, these one percenters done bought up all the, all the assets. Remember in 22, I was telling you guys, buy assets. This is the time you build wealth when, when they're dirt cheap like this. This is how you really elevate your wealth. This is how you leapfrog your wealth. Because at some point, the stock market got to come back. I kept telling y'all that in 22. Buy, buy, buy. It's coming back. It's coming back. Be patient. Some of y'all listened to me. Some of you didn't. 23 rolls around. Guess what starts to happen? Fed started pulling back little bit by little bit, right? Fed chairman come out, give his little remarks. Oh, yeah. Inflation's coming down. What we're doing is working, but we're going to keep rates higher for longer, but it's working. Rates start. Inflation keep coming down. We get to June 2023. Guess what the Fed does? This is where we, if we would have been paying attention, guys, you would have you would have known right then. Guess what happens in, two, in, in June of 2023? Fed comes out and says, we're not increasing short term interest rates. Right there is where things started to turn for the stock market. A lot of us didn't know that, but it did. See, the one percent knew it, though, but they had already bought all their assets in 2022 in first part of 2023, they had already bought all their assets. They were ready now to do what? For it to go back up so that they could trick y'all into buying and they could sell. So that's what happened. Fed stopped increasing short-term interest rates in June of 2023. And in November of 2023, we had one of the greatest stock market runs in the history of the stock market. It was about a nine week run. It went bananas. And guess who took the remaining portion of that 7 trillion from the 99%, the 1%, that's when they did it. Because remember, we sold in 22 thinking that the world was coming to an end. They picked up those assets and then guess what they did? They said, nope. Sorry, guys, we're not coming to an end. We're going to be okay. <laughs> Fed done stopped, stopped uh, increasing rates. Matter of fact, they even said they're going to start reducing rates. Once they heard the Fed chair say that, oh, my goodness, the stock market went crazy. And those people took the rest of that $7 trillion from us. That's how they got the $7 trillion from us, guys. Just like that. Pretty simple. Here's the deal, though. 2024. What are we going to do? We got an opportunity to take some of that or all of that $7 trillion back. It's being set up right now. It's being set up right now. If you're paying attention, right? It's being set up. The 1% are buying. They're buying. Here's my recommendation. We got to start buying. S&P is at 5,000 points. Highest it's ever been. A lot of people think, oh, it's at the high water mark. I don't want to buy when it's high. What they're missing is it's going to go higher. I shared with you guys last night in, in the live stream last night, I shared with you some statistics on the S&P 500 over the last 10 years. In 2014, the S&P 500 was hovering around 2,100 points. 10 years ago, 2014. 10 years later, 5,000 points. So it moved 3,000 points in 10 years. Even with the downturn in 2020 from the pandemic, even with, even with the negative 2022 year in the stock market, it still increased 3,000 points in 10 years. So this next 10 years, 2024 to 2034, 2033, these next 10 years, I believe it repeats itself. It goes from 5,000 points to 8,000 points or higher. That's what I believe over the next 10 years. So what am I doing? I'm going to buy these assets right now. I'm not going to wait till the Fed start reducing and they start running because that's what's going to happen. Time to buy is now. 
I'm buying right now through dollar cost averaging every single month because I know once the Fed reduces the first time this year, mayhem is going to take place. Well, we're about to go into. No, we're not. We're not going into a recession. Not in my opinion. You do know the GDP last year for the United States, for our economy, the GDP was 3%. That's not a recession, guys. The only thing that could disrupt anything is the labor market. Now, if the labor market decides, hey, we're going to soften up, we're not going to add 353,000 jobs like we added in January of 2024, if the labor market decides not to do that, then that's the only thing that could throw a monkey wrench in what's getting ready to happen. But if that labor market continues to be resilient like it is, adding a couple hundred thousand jobs per month, look at here, guys. This thing finna run again, I'm telling you. I've already walked you through the last three years and gave you evidence of what happened. How we fell asleep at the wheel and the 1% just went ahead and took $7 trillion from us. We just fell asleep at the wheel. We got caught up in, oh. Oh, I got to go enjoy life. I got to, life is short. I don't know what will happen. Let me go on my trips. I, it's all about memories. Uh, it's about experiences. Guys, all that means nothing if you broke. You can have all the experience you want to. At some point, you're going to feel the brokenness in your pocketbook. And all the experiences in the world are not going to pay your bills. All the experiences in the world is not going to take care of you when you get to the golden years. I don't care how many experiences you have. I don't care how many pictures you got up in your house of vacations and all this other crap. It's not going to take care of you. I don't, I, 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 hey man, I'm all for memories. But memories is not going to pay my bills. Memories is not going to pay these escalating and skyrocketing insurance costs. I don't know why y'all think they're coming down. They're not. They're not. So you can get caught up in this whole uh, emotional thing about your feelings and, and your experiences and your, let me tell you something, man. I I'm going to tell you something, guys. That's not going to cut it. In this world we live in, you got to have a level of income to exist. I can't walk around and pay this increase of 40% in my automobile insurance with memories. State Farm don't want my memories. They want to get their premium in cash, in good old greenback, in good old U.S. dollars. That's how they want their payment. They don't want my memories. The memories might work for you, but they don't work for this real world out here we live in. No one cares about your memories. What people care about in this world is you're going to have to pay if you want a service. Because guess what? I got a family to feed to. That's what people care about. Now, we can sit around here and allow this 1% to turn us into a nation of people who own nothing. Because that's what they're going to do to you. I'm telling you, you're headed that direction. I just read the information over the last five decades, what's happening to the middle class. It's shrinking. Salaries are shrinking. Population is shrinking. You're going to have the haves in this country and you're going to have the have-nots. You're going to have the, 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 the wealthy and you're going to have the poor. Ain't going to be no middle class in 20 to 30 years. It's going to be people who have assets and people who don't. That's kind of how they're going to define it in this country. Either you have assets or you don't. Either you're the engine or you're the gasoline that makes the engine go. You decide. That's the way it's going to be. That's how it's going, guys. So, so, so you better start doing something right now to prepare yourself. The only thing that saves you, and you guys know, y'all hear this from me all the time. The only thing that saves you is assets that generate income. That's the only thing that saves you. Your memories are great. I got memories. Uh, priceless. 
but they're not going to pay the insurance bill. You can't go in the grocery store and get to the checkout line with a buggy full of groceries and pay with memories. Mm -mm. Can't do it. Can't do it. Can't pay with memories. Got to pay with old, good old fashioned greenback. Good old fashioned dollar. Can't go through the, the checkout line and pay with crypto. For those of you out there that think crypto going to take over the world, can't go to the grocery store and pay with crypto. Got to pay with good old-fashioned greenback, good old U.S. dollar. Question is, over these next 10 years, are you going to do what you need to do to build yourself some assets and take back that $7 trillion they took from us? I'm going to do everything I can to take my portion back. I'm going to do everything on this YouTube channel to encourage you guys to take your portion back. And the way we take our portion back is pretty simple. We earn, we keep what we earn, and then we multiply it through investments, through assets. That's what we got to do. And not let these people turn us into a nation of renters, a nation of people that own nothing, a nation of people that have no assets. All we got is stuff. We ain't got no assets. We got a bunch of stuff. And we don't even own that stuff. It's buy now, pay later. We still ain't got the, we still ain't paid that off. But they want to make it easier on us so we can forget about assets, guys. See, this is the whole concept, what they're trying to do to us. They're trying to get us to a point where it is so easy to get this stuff that we want, then we lose sight of assets. I just, just, hey, listen, guys. Give them an app where they can just go on and, and buy what they want and pay for it later. Just get it to them because that way they ain't got to worry about no assets. See, that way they're not going to worry about assets. Let's just give it to them. Let's, let's give it to them. They'll pay us. If they don't, so what? It's a bunch of cheap crap anyways. Right? Who cares? Who cares? All we want them to do is not buy Assets. We want to control all the assets because we know that's where the real wealth is. See, if we allow them to control assets, then ultimately we won't be able to control them financially. And then we're going to jeopardize our cushy lives. We're going to jeopardize our wealth if we allow these folks to get wealthy. That's, that's the directive of the 1%. I'm telling you, that is the directive. We can fall into that trap if we want to. Or we don't have to fall into that trap. So, in conclusion, how do we change that? How do we, how do we stop the 1% from turning us into a nation of renters? How do we stop the 1% from turning us into a nation of people who have no assets? How do we stop the 1% from manipulating us? One, we got to reprogram the way we think. We got to watch what we allow to come into our filter system. We got to stop watching Jim Cramer on CNBC. Guy's 1%, man. Guy worth millions and 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 millions of dollars. What am I watching him for? I'm not. He's controlled by whoever owns CNBC. Whatever they tell him to say, he's going to say. And I ain't got nothing against Jim Cramer. I'm sure he's a great guy. I don't know him, but I'm just saying, guys, and I'm not picking on him. I'm just saying, guys, come on. Come on. What we need to do is pretty simple. We need to earn and we need to have multiple sources of earnings. Not be subject to some employer because 85 percent of Americans work for somebody. So all we work for somebody. But we need to still have multiple streams of income. I need a primary income. I need a secondary income. I need a thirdary income if I need it. That gives me choices. I take that income and I do what with it? I only buy the basic necessities to live. That's all I do. The basic necessities. Right? Then I take the other part of that money and I invest it in assets. I invested in paper assets. I, I invested in a business. I can even invest it in real estate if it's real estate for income. And the income supports 
the debt. The income supports the expenses of the property. And I buy it in a good neighborhood where people have a desire to live. So it can appreciate in value over time. That's it. Those are the three assets, guys, we invest in. Right now, in my opinion, the, the two that are the most easy to invest in is a business and paper assets. Paper assets is really easy to invest in. All you got to do is get a brokerage account. Put some money in that brokerage account. Buy some investments. Be patient. That's all you got to do. And just replicate that process every month, every year for the next 10 years. And you will have assets. Now you're in control of your life. Not the 1%. They can't touch you because you got assets, right? They're not going to destroy the stock market because the 1% either make their money in the stock market or they hold their money in the stock market for income. They're not going to destroy that. They're not going to destroy the real estate market either. Why? Because they either make their money in the real estate market or they hold their money in the real estate market for income. They're not going to destroy businesses. Why? Because either they make their money in businesses or they hold their money in businesses for income. See, the 1% guys, they greedy, but they ain't stupid. Why in the world would they destroy those three asset classes when that's where they keep 99.999% of their money? They're not. So this notion of, oh, the stock market is a scam. You just, you're misinformed, man. You're misinformed. It's not a scam. It's a way to multiply money. How do I know that? Because I've done it for the last 20 years. Five years. That's how I know it's not a scam. Stop listening to people, guys, who don't have any experience doing anything. You, you, you catch all these people on YouTube and TikTok and all these other, ain't invested a dime, but yet and still, they trying to teach you how to invest. You better watch who you're listening to. Probably a 1% or plant. You better watch it. You better start listening to you. You better start figuring some of this stuff out for you, thinking for yourself. I've already told y'all, y'all know I don't go on, I don't went on the record many times and, and told y'all, I ain't that smart. But what I am good at is following the 1%. I'm real good at following them because I know they lead me to the money. See, they lead me to the money. I don't have to be that smart. All I got to do is just watch them. See, I don't have to be that smart. I just got to watch them because I know their tricks. I know exactly how they make money. I just watch them and I follow them. Right? Why ain't the stock market crashing right now? Why? Because the 1% gearing up. They're gearing up to make a killer when the Fed start reducing these interest rates. That's why it ain't crashing. They're invested. Yeah, they're running the treasuries every now and then, but then they run back. Stock market ain't going nowhere, man. I'm telling you, in 10 years, it's going to be 8,000 points. That's my prediction. 8,000 points or better in 10 years. It went from 2014 to 2024. It jumped 3,000 points. I think it'll jump another 3,000 to 5,000 points over the next 10 years. And I'm gonna be invested. I'm gonna be right there waiting on it. Mm hmm. I'm gonna build wealth. I'm gonna keep building wealth. So that way I'm never controlled by the 1%. The 1% don't control me. Mm -mm. I ain't got no problem with the 1% because I, hey man, I live in the greatest country in the world. And guess what? The good news is the 1% did what it took. I can't be mad at them. I can't be mad at the 1% for manipulating folks who allow them to manipulate them. I can't be mad at them about that. I'm not going to be controlled by them, though. I'm going to build my, my wealth and control my own destiny, and take back my own financial power, right? I, those things I can do. I'm in control of that. 
Again, we got the greatest country in the world, guys. There's no excuses. I don't care what your, what your background is. I don't care. If you live here in the United States, I don't care what your background is. You can become whatever you want to be. Who I, I can't really get, get a good job because I, I, I've been in prison. It's okay. Start your own business. Figure out what your skill set is and start your own business. They can't stop you from starting your own business. Yep. Somebody might say, yeah, you know, you're a felon. I can't employ you. Guys, that's just life. But guess what? That don't stop you. Start your own business. Start your own business. Build your own business. Can't nobody stop you from doing that. Ain't nobody going to stop you from starting your own business in this country, guys. They encourage you. So let's not make any excuses. I know we all have a past. Some of our pasts are worse than others. I get it, guys. But we cannot live in the past. We got to live in the present and look forward to the future. And right now, if we don't get some assets under our belt, we're going to become a nation of people who own nothing. And the 1% will own everything. The 99% will just be gasoline in the engine. But they own the car. They own the car. We're just gasoline in it to make it go. Right? So we don't want to be that. So what we got to start doing is we got to come up with a game plan to buy assets. I've given you my game plan. It's buy paper assets every month, every year for the next 10 years. That's my game plan. Well, golly, Richard, that's too long. I ain't got 10 years. Well, uh, you, you waited this long with no assets. Why can't you wait 10 more years? I, I always get a kick out of that when people say, well, that's too long. Well, golly, how old are you? Oh, I'm, I'm 40. Okay. You've waited 40 years with no assets. Why can't you wait another 10 to build assets? You're 40 years old, no assets. Wait 10 years, have assets. Come on, man. Let's stop it. But see, that's the way we're programmed, though, in this country. We're programmed. They program us that way from, from babies. We're programmed to want everything now. That's the way we're programmed. That's why I keep telling you guys, you got to change your programming. You got to clean out your filter system. You got to put new things in your filter system. Live on less than what I make. Live on a plan, which is a personal budget. Stay out of consumer debt. Save and invest. So you got to replace the crap you got in there now. You got to replace that with those financial principles. You got to clean your filter system out and put in those financial principles and live by them every day. You do that and you run hard for 10 years, you're going to build wealth. You ain't got to worry about the 1% when you get to the golden years. Because then you'll control your own financial destiny. Your assets will take care of you. Again, they're not going to destroy these three assets because that's where all their money is. Well, what if I do all of that and they just crash the stock market? Why would they do that when all their money in the stock market? They're not. Where are they going to keep their money at? How are they going to multiply their money if they put it in the stock? How are they going to pay for their private jets? How are they going to pay for their private islands? How are they going to pay for their luxury hotels? How are they going to pay for their luxury cars? How are they going to pass down generational wealth if they destroy the money makers? The money makers are businesses, stock market, real estate. Ain't nobody finna destroy the money makers, guys. 1%, like I said, guys, they greedy, but they ain't stupid. They ain't stupid, man. Ain't nobody finna destroy the money makers. They just got you fooled that some of them are scams. They just done fooled you through manipulation. That's how they control you. They like the puppet master. You like little puppet, little, little, little puppet. You like Pinocchio, little puppet. Guys, let me tell you, man. All we have to do is follow this wealth transfer blueprint for 10 years. Are you willing to do that? If you are, lock it in with a thumbs up. If you're willing to follow the wealth transfer blueprint for 10 years and control your financial life, lock it in with a thumbs up. I'm willing to do that. I'm willing to delay gratification so that I can have everything I want at the end. See, I don't get what I want at the beginning. I get what I want at the end. But I got to go through the, the 10 years. 10 years will go like that, guys. Just yesterday, it was 2014. 
Now it's 2024. Ten years went like that. Ten years will go like that again. Before you know it, it'll be 2034. And you'll be wealthy. You'll have wealth. You'll have choices. You'll have more time. You'll have more freedom. So lock it in with a thumbs up if you're going to rock with me these next 10 years. Lord's will, I'm going to be on this platform for another 10 years encouraging you guys every single day. So lock it in with a thumbs up if you're going to rock with me, follow me, and participate in this 10-year wealth transfer that's getting ready to take place starting now. I don't care if you got $50 to invest. Put that $50 in and then work yourself up. Next, time, next goal, golly, I want to get 100 a month in. Next goal, I want to get 300 a month in. Next goal, I want to get 500 a month in. How do I up from $50 a month to $500 a month? Get you some more sources of income. Clean up your expenses. Stop spending money on stuff you don't need. You'll have more money to invest. Period. Oh, I, I, I don't want to hear it. No excuses. Make more money. Keep more money. Invest more money. You get to your pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. It's that simple. I don't have a blueprint to follow. I don't know what to do. Watch my YouTube channel. Rock with me every day. Lock it in with a thumbs up every day. You'll know what to do. Because your boy know what to do. I know what to do. I done did it for 25 years. I know exactly what to do. And I don't have a problem with sharing that with you guys. I'm not your financial advisor. I have no idea what a financial advisor does. Nor do I care. I do know how to multiply money, though. I do know how to multiply money, guys. So rock with me. Lock it in with a thumbs up. And I'm going I'm to walk you through the blueprint every day. All you got to do is make the decision and make the choice. You're going to take action. See, that I can't help you do. I can't help you take action. That's on you. But I can provide you some information to give you the opportunity to take action. You ain't got to go out and recreate the will. I already created, the will has already been created. I didn't even create it. It's been created. I just decided to jump on it. I just decided to jump on it. And all I'm asking you guys to do is to decide to jump on the will. It's already been created. You do not have to go out and create your own blueprint if you don't want to. Because I get a lot of emails and DMs from you guys. Richard, I'm brand new. I don't know where to start. And all I tell them is, hey, first step, get your brokerage account open. If you don't have one, go down to the description box. Open up that Moo Moo brokerage account, the one I use. Put you some money in it. Get you up to 15 free stocks. You're ready to roll. Well, Richard, what are you buying? SPLG, S&P 500 ETF. SPLG, that's the ticker symbol. What else you buying? FTEC, Information Technology ETF. What else you buying? Magnificent Seven. Pretty simple, guys. It ain't complicated. It ain't honors algebra. It's just basic old arithmetic. Basic old arithmetic. Two plus two. It's so, basic arithmetic. Two plus two. It ain't nothing fancy. It's basic stuff. The key, though, is, is you got to condition your mind to discipline yourself, be consistent, be patient. If you can do those three things, I just gave you the blueprint. In 10 years, you will be wealthy. What does wealthy mean? I don't know. You got to define wealth. I can't define wealth for you. You got to define what wealth is for you. You got to define that. I can't define what wealth is for you. For me, wealth is about being able to have enough assets to pay for my lifestyle. That's wealth to me. I don't know what wealth means to you. You better figure it out, though. You better have a, a definition for wealth. Because that's how you're going to get through these next 10 years. Because it's going to be difficult. But if, but, if, but if you want it bad enough, you can get it. Lock it in with a thumbs up, guys, before you get out of here. I, I, I appreciate y'all rocking with me on this Saturday morning. I done, I done kept y'all too long. Hopefully you got something out of this. Hopefully you understand what this 1% are trying to do to you. They're trying to turn you into a nation of renters. They're trying to turn you into a nation of people that don't own no assets. That, that own nothing. They want to turn you into a nation of people that buy now, pay later. 
That's what they want to turn you into. They want to turn you into a nation of people that buy now, pay later. They want to turn you into a nation of people that only want to push the easy button. I want the easy button. I want the easy button. They want to turn you into a nation of people like that. Don't let them. Do not let them turn you into a nation of easy button pushers. Don't do it. Don't do it. America is the greatest country in the world. Let's act like it. We control this country. This is our country, the 99%. This is our country. We're not going to be divided anymore. We're going to come together as one people. I don't care what color we are. We're going to come together as one people. And we're going to build wealth. And we're going to take over this country again. Right now, we got people leading it. I ain't got nothing against them. One percenters, all these politicians. None of them mean nothing, guys, without us. We're the backbone of this country. Not them. They may control it. But they're not the backbone of it. We are the backbone of this country. And if we can come together as a people, just one people, not 15 different people, one group of people, if we can just come together, build wealth, take back what's rightfully ours, we're going to be great, man. We're going to be great. So this is for all people, man. We just got to come together as people, help one another. I'm going to do my part. I'm going to be on here every day to help you guys to the best of my ability. And I hope you rock with me and, and, and hang in there with me on this next 10-year journey. It's going to be great. It's going to be fantastic. And I look forward to it. Thank you guys for stopping in. Lock it in with a thumbs up before you get out of here. Thoughts become things. If you can see it in your mind, you can hold it in your hands. You guys keep chasing your greatness. Never stop believing in yourself. Stay healthy, get wealthy, and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace.